Acho que eu vou colocar o fone. Hello, people! Opa! O pessoal chegando. Vou colocar um fone aqui. Olha, eu tô até tremendo. Tô tremendo. Oi. Só pense nos comentários bons. Tá bom. Senão você vai ficar meio triste. Mari! Mari já tá aqui. Estão me ouvindo bem todos? Huh? Hello, Mari! <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, oh, your daughter. That was my daughter helping me get on live because I've never done this. A <laughs> <laughs> first time. Thank you for joining us. Look, my kid, he, he wants to, to, to speak something. Uh. Hi, New York. Hi. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Ela perguntou, I'm good, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> He's having lunch. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> bye bye, ela falou. So, to start, let's put some music. Can you hear the music? Yeah. All fans all over the world are missing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Theory. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, to welcome you. Thank you. In this live. And we have the, our hearts, I, I feel like. Mm, I know. Your country, my country, our theater communities, our, our neighbors, our friends, everyone. Is, is struggling in some way, but moving forward, moving forward. Uh, yes. How long are you in the quarantine? Is isolated with your family? Still? Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Now it's just become kind of somewhat normal in a way, I guess. You know, we're adjusted. Uh, we're in phase one of opening, but that is still a very soft kind of opening. So, People are allowed to go back in. Some businesses are open. No, no retail. Um, you can kind of pick up from the front of the store with some of them, but pretty much it's everything still closed. Still closed, but you can pick up things on the side of the street. Some shop fronts have a, a table and things like that that you can go pick up a few things. And, you know, they're serving food that you can just take with you and walk in the street. And thank God it's summer because it means people can get out. We can get to the park, Central Park, and walk out right. and mingle and things. And as long as everyone, you know, keeps, follows the protocols of wearing the masks and, you know, distance. Yes. But we, what you, about us? Yeah, your, what's your quarantine look like? My quarantine? Wow. Well, here in Sao Paulo, they just started to open the the grocery is something, but it, it's, okay. it's really cra a cra craziness to do that because all the numbers are growing Yeah, and, and the hospitals are full. So if you have a little bit of <laughs> mind uh, of worrying, you, have, you, have, you must be in your home with your family. Mm -hmm. So many of us are in, um, in, uh, doing all the... the um, Kids, uh, high school, everything uh, at home. Every, everything is closed. I'm giving some classes mm -hmm. at home. Yeah. But let me, let, let me ask you something first. Mm -hmm. uh, Marie, you were at the Broadway uh, doing Madame Giri since when? Since when? Since 2017, around May. I think my first performance was May. Yeah, so three years. You did, Christine, in Australia, right? I did. In the last century. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And then you stopped do doing Phantom for one decade, like... And I went on to West Side Story in Australia, and I did My Fair Lady, and then I decided to move to America 
and I moved to America. I did a couple of shows here regionally and then I had children and then I moved into sort of concert. Then I got old, duh, older. <laughs> and I ate at the jury. So, mm. And have fun. Do, do you have fun to do... Do you feel like it's fun to do Madame Giri? Oh, yeah. Don't, don't you? I feel like she's got so much story and so much backstory. I mean, she's a very, she's a very multi-layered character. Yes. And I think she, she's, you know, you know I feel like uh, comparing to Christine, it's a role like, it's okay role, you, you, It's a light role to do, right? Because yeah. Christine is always on stage. <laughs> Christine's a tour de force. Yeah, you really learn to cut your teeth on um, what it is to be a professional in this industry with that role. Yeah. And then you start to do like at, at seven or uh, two, 12 um, performance in the week, right? In New York, in Broadway, on Broadway. 12? No, we do eight, no. Eight, no, eight shows a week. Eight shows a week. From Tuesday to... Uh, the schedule's a little, a little different to the rest of Broadway. So ours is Monday through to Saturday. And we do two shows on Saturday and two shows on Thursday. Generally, there's, the rest of Broadway has a matinee on a Wednesday. But our, for, you know, for whatever reason, ours happens to be on a Thursday matinee which was the day that Broadway shut down with the virus. And we were actually in the show when um, Cuomo came up with the announcement that we were closing and that Broadway would be shut down. We, we knew something was happening, but it was, you know, in the middle of the show that we found out. And how do you feel, how do you all cast feel like with that, that information? You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you're, in the situation and it's happening, you know, you just kind of roll with it. I think we were all in shock. We knew, although we knew it was coming, but there was this sense of um, relief, you know, because it was the right thing to do. It was, you know, for safety, for health purposes. So, but there was a naivety about it because we didn't think it would be so long, you know, and now as this is emerging, we know that this is a new reality. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, I guess we were just stunned and you just roll with it. It happened so quickly. There was nothing else to do but to finish the show, say, is, say some quick goodbyes and, and move on. Since then, and yeah. You can say, please, oh. please. And how about all the cast and all the friends and colleagues from the, the show, mm -hmm. from the... Uh, Everybody from the backstage, everybody. How, how are you talking? Do you have an, a WhatsApp group to talk or not? We do a Zoom on Friday evenings with the cast. And then oh. opened up a, um, I think we now do once, about once a month, I think we've had like a full company meeting with the cast. And then they're going to open that up to the crew and everyone soon. Um, it's just managing everyone and everyone's times and trying to bring people together. Oh, gosh. Oops. I freeze. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a... Sorry. Um, my okay. So, no, I'm calling, probably. <laughs> and, uh, you know... What about you? Are you all doing that? And how many shows were you doing in Brazil? We did uh, until uh, December. We did about more than five uh, hundred uh, shows, né? and then stopped. And um, people was spreading all the in West Side Story, in other musicals and stuff. That everything stopped in March, right? Right. So. But about, let me ask you about the, you know, the, the salaries and the politics about the, the money. Can you explain how it, uh, how it goes in, with, the, with your American, North, North American people, artists? Right. Well, Broadway is um, under the umbrella of Actors' Equity. So 
we have a union here that is very strong and they advocate for their actors and we're all to be on broadway you need to be a member of actors equity so for those of us who you know were employed in the broadway show we're now uh we're not paid any salary we were paid out for the rest of the week and then two weeks after that so pretty much every show was a little bit different i believe but most of us i'd say majority of us were paid the basic equity wage for two weeks into the middle of April, uh, the beginning of April, and then nothing. Um, so then basically it's up to you as an individual to apply unemployment benefits in America. So then you go through the state government and you apply for unemployment benefits. And how about, uh, uh, sorry? Which I'm still waiting for, but that's another story. <laughs> mm. So... You have uh, levels of, uh, say, I don't know, uh, about, uh, amount of money. Is, is, is there a... There is. Some... There's um, you know, levels for ensemble and supporting leads and principals. So there is a tiered system of that. Most people on Broadway generally, you know, is sometimes can negotiate above that amount of money. But that two weeks we were paid, that was we were paid just the basic equity minimum, you know, which was the contracted for two weeks. And now it's really uh, up to unemployment and people pulling things together the best way they can. There was some access, I believe, to uh, people could access their superannuation, so the four, which is also called the 401k here. So I think there was an opportunity for some performers to be able to access emergency money there if they wanted to or if they had any accrue holiday pay they were able to access that um so that happened yeah we need to learn with you because just now we are going to organize our groups ourselves you know uh, people people from all the laws are changing and um we we, we are a little bit back um in the past but this is the time to reorganize everything. So we are doing that. And I, I'm, I'm, go on, sorry. Please. Well, I was, no. it is about to change, you know, God, please change, you know, so much in terms of its, you know, history with racism and everything. So we're about to change, I hope too, <laughs> and change governments. So, but yes, the society, you know, you know, everything from, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a womb, it's open. It's a, we, we need to change to put some remedies, some, something to, to really uh, cure from inside, from the essence to outside. Well, and pay people properly, you know, across the board, whether it's theatre or you're, you know, working in a shop, you know, everyone needs to be paid properly. Yes, when uh, all kind of levels of payments, it's, it's funny because it's like somebody, it's like the law says, no, somebody don't deserve to receive something. It's okay, you can die. <laughs> it's just that. Have unions there? Do you have, Talk. do you have laws and unions there to protect people's rights when they're working? No, they are not r working properly. We are really doing something new right now. Yeah, and because people are starving, people cannot eat, they, they, they can't, cannot pay the rent, everything. They are, they are not organized. Né? It's, it's really something that we are working on right now. And this is something that we, we should uh, talk about with you from North America, because even so, you are a little bit complaining, but you are, you are for us uh, mm -hmm. with your, your organized, um, how do you call syndicatos? How do you call the organized uh, from the musical theater? You mean the union? The Actors. union. Okay, yeah. I'm learning English also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me ex really do. I'm sorry. No, no, please. My, so it's, 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 
it's nice it's nice to 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 talk a little bit of in english then i will ask somebody to put some uh legends love some <laughs> online and then i explain with uh to people from brazil okay okay uh, now tell me about i i i am curious about something when you start um a show like phantom you be in the theater more t more than in at home right yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then with this crash all over the world how how about the changing how do you feel do you feel challenging to be inside in home with the, all, all your people your family how can you how can you feel about about it how do i feel about that i you know it's mixed blessings i mean it's wonderful to be home because i haven't been home for the evening time for three years and i have two teenage daughters so to be home with them i mean that's a gift you know to spend time and because we can't go out so we all have each other's you know attention and we literally have time to have a meal together so those it's it's been fantastic in terms of us communicating and reconnecting and now with all that's going on in the world um, conversations really really important conversations to be had especially as a parent as a mother you know those conversations are coming up more often with my emerging teenage or well, emerging young women um, and how to give them hope for their future and how to um, teach them to care and to connect with their communities because the only way forward is 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 empathy is to uh, be aware of the injustices in our world you know which are all there in whatever country we come from and and moving forward so those conversations are really powerful at the moment um, sometimes I feel it's very heavy and that you just wonder how we're going to move forward. And then other times I go to a protest march and I see everyone coming to get together and in the energy and the, the need for change it becomes really positive. So. Nice. It's really, really nice. Um, when I, when the, the phantom stopped, uh, I was about uh, nine, 19, 19 months away from um, from home, and well, I faced my my kid, my seven years old kid, and was like, "Wow, it's another person," <laughs> and now we are we can do uh, all the things together. Sometimes it's it's really. It's wonderful to to speak to him every day, to hear him, and to to reconnect to him. Mm. Yeah, I I felt so much. Um, I miss him. I miss I missed him uh, during the Phantom, and now mm. we can get uh, along together. It's it's fantastic. Sometimes I get crazy. I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm sure. And, uh, He's uh, at a fundamental school we, we call here, and I have to be alone with him. So um, they, the school are, are not prepared to do uh, online classes. So it's really tough for me as mom. And I cannot just uh, do that, do that, stop that, stop talking about it. I cannot do that, this in, in home because I, I, I'm, I'm alone with him all time all the time and sometimes he just get bored and okay close everything let's go let's do some yoga some aikido so let's see a movie or just eat something uh, uh sweet something like this so and uh, really difficult for moms with kids small kids <laughs> I, i'm so lucky in the sense that my girls are older so they're much more independent And they're much more, they know more their way around technology more than I do. And they embrace it more. So they're, they're online at school and they're very self-sufficient. So I'm very lucky in that sense. So I can just hold everything together, you know, 
cooking and cleaning and <laughs> emotional support. Um, very nice, very nice. Let me ask you about the protests and how you feel about everything is happening uh, with the racism. Mm. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just had to happen. It was, hap it was going to happen. And it's time it happened, you know. So, and we're all being uh, faced with self-examination and how to move forward with empathy, with kindness, with information, you know, education I think is key and trying to instill this in our children and how to move forward from here because we're not going back to the same. Things are not For sure. what they were. So we're, we have to embrace this new frontier and negotiate it and it has to come from the top down and it has to come through education, it has to come through government, it has to come through us lobbying our government, governments and pushing, you know, voting, all those things. Yes, education, awareness, mm -hmm. awareness of what you do. Even in our language, we have so racism and to fa it's nice now to open the eyes for this, to face it and it's, wow, Why should I speak like this? Because I am, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not a white person. I'm indigenous, <laughs> a native uh, South American, and 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 black. I'm black too. Yeah. So I'm a mixed. And how how can we fight with this racism? It's so intrinsic in our society, in our. Um, in our language, in our uh, nowadays, everything mm -hmm. is racist. We have to be back to that, r right? And um, and look inside ourselves. I think this is nice because the gov government is, is watching. Everything is happening. They need to do something right now. But each of one uh, can help with that are you doing protests yeah i have i've been to four so far so we went to i took my girls to protests i mean we're out there we're making banners we're going to washington in august there's going to be a big march i hear there um we're having conversations we're reading you know my daughter just ordered a whole bunch of books that she'd heard about at school about addressing racism and addressing what it is to be white and living here and what white privilege, what that means to us and how we can change things. So, you know, we have our summer reading and things like that. And the other thing, I mean, I, I'm very white. I come from, you know, a white country into another white, you know, I'm Australian born and bred. So I grew up in Australia, which has its own issues and struggles with its indigenous culture and making peace with that and moving forward so um in my young adult years i was very much aware of the wrongs that the australian government had you know inflicted upon our indigenous aboriginal people in australia so um i have to say though being raised the community i was raised in was a deeply religious community I'm no longer really affiliated with any sort of religion, but it did give me one thing was never to judge anyone, never to judge anyone on any basis of language, culture, color of your skin. And I'm very grateful for that. Maybe I'm naive and I still have a lot to learn, but I do feel that my basis of um, the way I'm in life is, is never to judge someone so hopefully I with my little bits I try to live in a world where I help my neighbors literally <laughs> and figuratively, figuratively. I, I try to embrace um, people when I meet them on the street and help wherever I can and when I can so. it's okay you, to be white person <laughs> it's okay don't worry don't feel guilty about that <laughs> No, I don't. I, I don't. I just I feel guilty about the world. <laughs> How can we change it? You know. 
Yes, but it's it's nice to you to to speak about that because uh, it's it's awareness. So many people, white people, cannot um, face it. Just don't feel like it's it's nice to speak about this. And uh, I think the religion it's 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 if you got that, it's perfect. Not to judge. It's so amazing mm. things to do. I think everybody needs to to learn and. All the time we have to think, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. It's all seconds. And when you talk about the march that you are going to do in August, I chilled. I remember the marching to Washington from uh, that Vietnam War mm -hmm. uh, time. And I was, whoa, we'll be like, <laughs> still chilling. I know. Sorry, going to. To, to go your, with your kids, with your girls and your mom, you know. Back, sorry, did it freeze? I should yeah. have turned my phone off. Um, basically, back at the inaugura after the inauguration, we were there, the Women's March, back in 2015 wow. in January, January 29th. So I took the girls to Washington then, and that was... I've never experienced anything like that before. Just the, the sheer energy and the masses of people and women there. So, um, yeah, um, it's only one small thing that we can do. But, yeah. Well, when you talk about the, this, the time of the, uh, this march for women, and I was like, whoa, you're going forward, girl. Wow, I'm, I'm really proud of you there. Because we, we really need that. We are so behind here in Brazil, but we will learn. Well, you need uh, the numbers. The other thing is you've got the pandemic that looms over people's heads, you know, so it's, it's tricky. It has to be, it, um, that has to be taken into consideration for people. I, I don't know, but people are just so so angry and they need to come together you know to get so I don't know what to say everyone's wearing masks and everyone's being you know respectful at this time and and there still is a march with distance so hopefully uh, our numbers won't be impacted by that and that they're going up we've actually had the virus um, ourselves already so my family and I are all um, COVID we were positive and we all have antibodies, but we, no one knows what that means. So we're still waiting for the science, you know, to catch up and to tell us whether that means immunity. We don't know. So, okay. Just, just, so, uh, uh, I mean, if, if we the live uh, stop it, I will do it again. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, here in Brazil, we are, we have to use masks, uh, but, I, I feel uh, afraid to go out because the criminality, criminality is so, it's terrible. When we got in the, the, my building with my car, uh, many people uh, wants to, to come along and get in the, the building. It's, they are starving. They are crazy. So we cannot go out. Like, it's okay. Go out and yeah. go to a grocery shop and no it's not it's not okay it's terrible outside we well, have to food. sorry how do, how do you get your food then online we can uh, shop right. uh, by internet and then people deliver the food to you yes they delivered here and yeah. we all, do all the cleaning and my family my my parents live in manaus at the middle of amazon is there is worst and nobody got the COVID um, until now because they are doing uh, the quarantine. They are all is isolated. Right. Right. And what, tell me. Yes. And that this is, this is really tough because uh, the, the law needs to change and the government needs to do something right now. Right. Otherwise, it will be a civil war. Yeah. Right. You're 200, and what's your population there? It's in Brazil. Let me see. I think it's, we're 350 million in America. So 
And you're... Let me do a Google. 209 and a half millions. Wow. And What's yours in the USA? 350 million. But I'm... But you also have to look at the, um, the geography and the... Yeah. So that's, that's immense. Now, Sao Paulo, it's craziness. I think in New York, how, how many? In New York City, uh, it's probably like Sao Paulo, but not quite. <laughs> not at all. You, we were 40, 44, million. 44 million. That's in New York State. That's in New York State. And New York City, which is pretty Manhattan, is probably about 8 to 10 million, I think. And Let me see. Sao Paulo yeah. State is that, and city. I love Google sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> 12 million. And it's, it's really crowded here. Yeah. It's really crowded. Yeah. And we're, we're vertical. I mean, that's the thing. In Manhattan, is we're all in tall, tall buildings. Um, so I, I don't know. I haven't been to Sao Paulo. The, is your... <laughs> It's probably a more spread out, but close. I'm sure the... Yes, it's close. It's, um, the square meter. It's, well, it's so, it's, so, it's so crowded here. I think it's not... We don't have a space enough to everybody. Let me ask you something. Do you feel... The, um, about the women and the racism, do you feel women uh, loses... Uh, on stage, what do you feel like the difference between men and women? On, on stage? On stage, on the, um, do you feel about it on the contracts, about the money? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're inequitable, I would think. But... Um, in terms of the standard agree the the agreement within equity that is negotiated by our union there is it's equitable between men and women it goes more about your position within the company that's equitable but then what you negotiate with the producers is private so no one you know and those salaries But sometimes there have been, you know, there's information that gets out there. It's also about, it's, it's complicated too because Broadway is so much about box office appeal too. So if you are a celebrity, you obviously have more negotiating power. Whether you're a female celebrity versus a male celebrity, how that's negotiated, you know, I, I, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't... I don't this is a, a tough conversation, right? It is, and I'm not a celebrity, so I don't know. And, um, yeah, I'm sure. Yes, we, we, we should take a look about it. Yeah. This is something that I was talking with my girls uh, from The Phantom so much, because even I think we need some autoesteem, uh, some self-esteem to, to fight for our uh, rights. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and this is something that we, we need to, to talk about. And hello, sindicatos from Brazil. I'm talking to the, the union from Brazil. Let's, vamos conversar sobre esse assunto, equalizar, né, igualdade de salários e tal. Equal, equanimity from the sal uh, to the salary. Marie, let's Let's see if you, what you want to, to tell to the young people who long to go to the Broadway to work on, on stage like us. Oh, uh, I think keep working on your dream and keep working on your talent and your skills. I mean, every day it takes um, practice and motivation and focus. But whether it's Broadway or whether it's just sharing your, your talent. And now, you know, we have this incredible platform where you can connect with people and you can share your talent. 
So use those opportunities. You know, I certainly didn't have them. It was, uh, there was no social media when I was out there starting my career. But it's a pretty significant way to move forward. Um, and I think, you know, any opportunity you get to sing and perform and make something happy, I think go for it if you can. <laughs> It's not really my avenue to be on social media singing, but <laughs> the young people are more comfortable with it than what I am, so, and they should. Okay, and I was, I, I asked you yesterday, so if you want to sing something or say something, what do you feel about it? I, 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 you just <laughs> told that you don't feel Essentially a little shy, I guess, unless I'm in my costume and my, And I've uh, become the role. I, I'm, when it's just me, I'm a different person. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to share, I guess, the lyrics of um, Stephen Sondheim's song, Children Will Listen, uh, because I feel this is a moment, and especially as we are mothers and we are handing the future to our children, trying to show them how to move forward. I think it's our role to be very careful with what we say to our children and, and to be examples to our children and live the best way we can live because they're our future. So, so then yeah. I'll read you some of it um, okay. and remember it. So, careful the things you say, children will listen. Careful the things you see and learn. Children may not obey, but children will listen. Children will look to you for which way to turn, to learn what to be. Careful before you say, listen to me. Children will listen. Careful the wish you make, wishes are children. Careful the path you take, wishes come true, not free. Careful the spell you cast, not just on children. Sometimes the spell may last, past what you can see and turn against you. Careful the tale you tell, that is the spell. Children will listen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. It's a great Some song. Time. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. You know, something that came along in my, my mind here is the finale from the West Side Story. Oh. There's a place for us. I believe in that. Somewhere a place for us. Peace and quiet and open air. Wait for us somewhere. Did you sing that? Yes, I did. Yes. Uh, uh, I was probably the whitest Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And I think this place is, you can, uh, we can build together this yeah. place. We have to, oh. have to keep yeah. building. You know, we have to keep going and we have to keep connecting. And connecting like this is really important. Thank you for having the passion and for organizing this. Um, I wish I could be there to help. <laughs> I wish there was something more we could do on a global level. Um, to help other countries as such, you know. Let's do something. Let's keep uh, speaking, keep in touch, and we can think about uh, the Americas and hold on and do something online to, to help. We really need to help. This, well, this conversation was a big help. Uh, we will learn about you just described with uh, your life right now in New York. Mm -hmm. So let's think if we can do something online with the, the, the cast from Broadway and the other people too. 
mm-hmm. and do something together. I just, uh, I talked to Melina at C- in Seoul. They are okay. They I, send love. Uh, yes, I spoke to them about their protocols. I spoke with the, with Claire, the Christine, who is Australian, Claire Lyons, about how theatre might turn, you know, with the protocols of hand sanitising and or the masks and backstage, things like that. But we're not there. How- Yes, and the Majestic is so close. short. Close, my gosh. It's small. It's small. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, we, yeah, we don't have the luxury of big new theatres, so the backstage doesn't have space. So I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. And uh, let's see what's going on. And I talked to, to Reiner also. So, so cute. Uh, director and um, well if you can uh, speak with other people who wants to do a live we can do something a zoom or something and when record and put on youtube would be nice yeah people I'll, from great britain i'll try and post more about what's going on in new york i'm kind of go through phases of doing social media and not doing social media so okay it's okay so. It's tough. It's, 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 I know sometimes I have to turn yeah. off everything. So just that. Okay. Let's, see, let's finish, finish this live. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you so much. It's so great to, to meet you yeah, uh, one year ago. It was so, mm-hmm. so nice. You do that uh, tour in the Majestic Theater. Thank you for being my guide. Welcome. Uh, thank you for this conversation. We keep in touch, yes. and I hope I hope to be with you uh, more time uh, alive, facing in New York or you here. You are we will be really welcome to come here. Would be great to be a, a, a world's uh, seminars with a cast from Phantom. I know. No, no, should do an international. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And thank you very much. We keep in touch. And thank you very much. Be, you know, I'm sending my love and hugs from here, from the South America, to you, to your daughters. Thank you very much to be here with us, okay? Well, bye. Bye. Bye.